Good morning, everybody. We want to thank you guys for, for coming out and sharing this moment with us, uh, with the governor who's going to announce our uh, LIHE program. But before we do, and before I turn the mic over to uh, the governor, I want to personally thank him for his child care initiative that I hope he's uh, going to share with you uh, this morning, uh, where we, he's talking about providing uh, an incentive for child care workers and child care providers throughout the state of Illinois. So with no further ado, Governor Frisker. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bragg. Thank you for hosting us today. Uh, it means an awful lot to be back here in Peoria, uh, especially making, I think, very positive announcements that'll help lots of folks, not just here, but all across the region and the state. Well, good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you to the Peoria Citizens Committee for Economic Opportunity. Uh, to all the people who are engaged, the staff, uh, so important the work that you're doing. I also want to thank uh, Leader Jahan Gordon Booth for hosting us here today in Peoria and for her amazing work on behalf of uh, people who often have been left out and left behind and who will be helped by the announcement that we're making today. Our state's response to this pandemic has been defined by a simple principle that I strongly believe in. The strongest recovery is one that puts the working families of Illinois first. Last year, I introduced rental and mortgage assistance, an expanded program to help pay utility bills, child care support, and small business grants. This year, we're bringing each of these back bigger and better because there's nothing more important that we can do during this recovery than to provide for our residents and our small businesses a little more stability in these uncertain times. And that brings me to today's announcement. This, year's, this year, uh, the state of Illinois is offering $327 million in community assistance programs for low-income families, and that includes the latest round of our low-income household energy and assistance program, LIHEAP, and the Community Services Block Grant Program. We're offering residents in need more access than ever before to vital safety net programs that can prevent them from falling behind on payments, falling into debt, or risking their ability to get back to work. Overall, this $327 million investment represents a $52 million increase over last year's programs. It's a historic investment to meet a historic moment. This year's record level of funding comes in part through federal COVID relief dollars and action by our own General Assembly to make sure that state and federal funding can be found and made more available and accessible than ever before for families in need. With more funding, we've increased the level of payments to individual households as well. Residents qualifying for utility assistance will see a boost in payments from an average credit of $750 last year to now $1,000 this year. And with a new law codifying my administration's inclusive approach to these programs, approximately 3.5 million Illinoisans are eligible for these relief dollars, assistance that never needs to be paid back. Anyone seeking emergency relief can visit HelpIllinoisFamilies.com. I'm going to repeat that, HelpIllinoisFamilies.com. If you visit there, you can determine your eligibility, or you can visit one of the community action agencies around our state that provide assistance accessing these benefits. Those include the Peoria Citizens Committee for Economic Opportunity, under the watchful eye, thank you, of McFarland Bragg. To date, we've received over 23,000 applications for these funds. 
New and existing users alike should plan to work with their local agency, whether in person or online, to apply, determine benefits, and if approved, rely on the local agency to handle this assistance, from rent to utilities to food and water on their behalf. That same website, HelpIllinoisFamilies.com, will help residents determine their local agency for assistance. We're doing all that we can to make it as easy as possible for our residents to get help when they need it. I'm intent on delivering the pandemic recovery that our residents deserve. This is yet another way that we can get there, and I won't stop until the job is done. So I want to thank you, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to our acting director of the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, Sylvia Garcia. Sylvia? Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. As the Governor mentioned, my name is Sylvia Garcia, and I'm the Acting Director of the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, or as we like to call it, DCO. I'm very ha happy to be here today in Peoria with all of you as we launch the new program year for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or LIHEAP, and the Community Service Block Grant Program, or, CS or as we like to call it, CSBG. These are two key programs in our work to help households in need and sub support communities as they recover from the pandemic and build back better. I'd like to thank McFarland McFarland Bragg over here and his team behind us uh, at the Peoria Citizens Community Committee for Economic Opportunity, PCCO, for hosting us here today. They represent one of our 37 community action agencies across the state who help families access funds available to offset basic household costs. Last year alone, PCO, C PCCO directed $6.7 million to 7,600 households in, Peor in the Peoria area, providing assistance needed to help pay bills and avoid utility shutoffs, including to people like Rashonda uh, Casey, or yes, Corey, sorry, Rashonda Corey, um, from uh, the local area here who really was benefited from that, those funds. The work of PCCO was part of over $343 million in LIHEAP payments to Illinois families last year, with funds reaching 289,000 individual households across the state. For many families struggling during the COVID-19 pandemic, these payments were a lifeline. Early on in the pandemic, the governor tasked us with retooling our LIHEAP and CSPG programs to aid in the response to the pandemic and to quickly reach those families in need and on the verge of crisis. That, that led to critical changes to the program, including an online application process, more funding available for each household, and more families being eligible, with folks making up to 200% of the poverty level being el eligible, and individuals being able to apply regardless of their immigration status. And thanks to our partners in the General Assembly, those expanded eligibilities were made permanent this spring and will continue for this year's program. Our goal here today is to kick off this new program year and tell folks that got funds last year that you're eligible again this year and that we've got $327 million for communities in need available to families across Illinois right now. As the governor mentioned, these funds can be used to offset the cost of utilities, rent, food, and so much more. So what do families out there who may have difficulty paying their bills need to know? How do you claim these funds? For a family of four with a monthly income of $4,417 or less, you are automatically eligible for these programs. As the governor mentioned, you can apply for these funds by visiting helpillinoisfamilies.com help to fill out the pre-application. You could also stop by one of our 37 community action agencies across the state, which are on that website as well, or you can give us a call at our hotline 1-833-711-0374. Again, 1-833-711-0374. It's so important that these resources go to the families that need them most, and so we really ask folks to act now and apply for the program. In closing, I want to thank our Office of Community Assistance at DCO, led by David Wortman, who's here today, as well as our dedicated community action agencies for all their work and their commitment to doing more to serve the families that need, need help today in Illinois. And with that, I'd like to invite Representative Gordon Booth, Leader Gordon Booth, a true champion for Illinois families in need, to say a few words. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's afternoon. Uh, help is here, ladies and gentlemen. Help is here. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank uh, Mr. Bragg, McFarland Bragg, for being frontline in this community for our seniors and working families uh, for as long as I can remember. Thank you so much for your leadership. 
uh, Mr. Bragg. Thank you so much, Dr. Rita Ali, Mayor Rita Ali, for being out here this morning. And I can't tell you how phenomenal it is to be able to work with a governor who not only shows up for Peoria regularly, but shows out. Uh, there has never been a governor in in my career of, of being elected uh, to serve this community, and I've worked with three different governors, I have not worked with a governor who has prioritized this community uh, more than the current governor, uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker. So thank you for not only your continued leadership, but for your friendship, not just to me, but to this community. Your response to uh, this COVID-19 pandemic was one that certainly brought Illinois national attention because of the way in which you are willing to stand on the side of science and on behalf of communities in which these light heap dollars are going to most certainly be having a phenomenal impact on. You know, ladies and gentlemen, $327 million is no small amount of money. And if we just think back a few short 18 months ago, we didn't know what 18 months from then was going to look like. And I can tell you, not just with the COVID, with, not just with the light heat relief dollars, but I could go line by line through the budget. And oftentimes, if you want to know about what someone cares about, you don't listen to what they say, but you watch where they spend the money. And where Governor Prisker is, he's putting his money where his mouth is. He's investing back in working families. He's investing back into our seniors to ensure that as we are going into the winter months, that they have a shorty as it relates to some of the most basic needs centered around uh, their energy costs. I can tell you, Mr. Bragg, and you know this, and many of your staff members remember the days uh, of not, I don't even want to say it was a long time ago because it was maybe a few short years ago when around this time of year there would be an opportunity that would come available for a few scarce amount of dollars to provide working families with a little bit of a boost. And do you remember those days when people used to literally line up and they would pack a tent the night before? So on a, around sometimes five, six o'clock, people would come out and they would wait in line outside here in this parking lot, hoping to be able to get a meeting the next morning. They would spend the night hoping to get some energy assistance, ladies and gentlemen. I remember those, and I'm not that old. I remember those days. So by going to the website, again, helpingillinoisfamilies.gov.com, helpingillinoisfamilies.com will prevent folks from having to um, have that level of uncertainty as it relates to the support that they are going to receive through PCCEO from the governor of our great state. So again, help is here. This is a moment in time where if individuals and families want to lift themselves up, you have a partner that's willing to work for you and with you to help you do what you need to do on behalf of yourself and your family. I know that there are a lot of questions uh, from the media and with no further ado, we wanna bring back our good friend to Peoria, Governor J.B. Prisker to the podium for Q&A. Thank you. Happy to take questions from members of the media. Governor, before the pandemic started, one of the most recurring headlines we would see was a teacher shortage and a nursing shortage. Today starts the vaccine or testing mandate for both of those professions, and there are still some holdouts, people who don't want the vaccine. Do you have concern that forcing people to submit to vaccines or testing might have an unintended consequence of creating a bigger shortage in hospitals? Of course, I'm concerned about people who will refuse to get vaccinated and refuse to get tested. Uh, so we don't want to cause any shortages, but we do want to keep everybody safe. Uh, we do have these alternatives available to people. But, but again, vaccination is the safest thing that people can do for themselves, for their communities, for their schools, as well as healthcare workers in their healthcare settings. Well, what we've put in place is something that is workable, something that uh, the vast majority of people are going to be following. Uh, and I know that there are people who are attempting to challenge these things in court. I would just say that this is a very unhelpful thing to do, and it is going to make schools and healthcare settings less safe.
worker responsible for paying for their cuts. Is that sustainable? That's well, in schools, we're, we're providing uh, testing. Um, you know, as you know, we've got a program to provide testing to schools that want it. Uh, so it won't be an expense uh, for people who are going to school. Uh, but there are healthcare workers, no doubt, who are working with their healthcare providers. Uh, this is a good sign, Rain. Uh, and uh, and I think it's, uh, you know, it, it will work itself out. We certainly are attempting to be as helpful as we can to those institutions that are having trouble putting their testing together. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, Hi. Where do negotiations on Well, let me just be clear. We're working with all comers. Um, you know, you've heard the name Samsung. Uh, it's very important to us to make sure that we're inviting companies to be part of the massive expansion that we're uh, engaging in for our electric vehicle manufacturing and all of the suppliers. So we'll continue to do that. And I'm hopeful that as we have over the last several months, we'll be making announcements over the next several. We have time for one more. Hey, Governor. Yes. What was the reasoning for excluding them? I'm not sure I totally understand the question because people are required to, uh, you know, if they're if they've been in close contact, right, to to uh, remove themselves to you know to to the schools and the local health departments are uh, you know helping to separate people to quarantine them to. Um, you know, keep them from infecting other people and to give them the opportunity to test and then come back into the institution. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.